Parents were undoubtedly stunned and shaken when these reports started coming out last year. And with the West Virginia legislative session starting tomorrow, Beth and Craig Bowden say now is the time for lawmakers to realize that the mere presence of cameras in special needs classrooms just isn't enough. Nine-year-old Trenton Bowden has been through a lot this school year. Is it right for a teacher to slap you? No. The Holtz Elementary School third grader, one of several students police say were verbally and physically abused by their special needs teacher, Nancy Boggs, who now is facing more than a dozen battery charges. Misdemeanors in the eyes of the law in West Virginia. It was a shock, and I think it was a shock for a lot of people that it's that what she did wasn't a felony. Beth and Craig Bowden stunned when they learned of the charge, which carries a $500 fine and up to a year in jail. They want lawmakers this session to take a close look at the issue and make it a felony for a person in position of trust, like a teacher. To hurt a child. Children like Trent deserve to have a future that's bright and they deserve to have an education where they feel safe. It's the same story at Horace Mann Middle School where a special needs teacher and three aides are also facing battery charges. Video inside both of these classrooms capturing the alleged incidents that range from slapping, smacking, shoving and berating students but not brought to light until complaints were raised, triggering the view of the cameras. Abuse is happening in the classroom and the presence of cameras isn't deterring it. Um, but, you know, honestly, it's not being watched regularly. And the school personnel and the teachers know that, that are doing this abuse. In 2019, West Virginia passed a law that put cameras in hundreds of special needs classrooms. The law sparked by an incident in Berkeley County after a mother hit a recording device in her daughter's hair, capturing disturbing comments from the teacher and aides. But now the Bowdens say the law is too restrictive when it comes to when that video can be viewed, who can see it, and how long it's kept. I think there was probably a lot more going on in that classroom, probably from day one, and I think that as parents, we deserve to see that. As it stands now, the law says the video is to be kept for 90 days. After that, it's mandated to be deleted or made unretrievable, and the video can't be viewed unless an incident is reported. We want to know what happened. We want to be able to watch every minute of the video and see exactly what happened throughout the whole school year. The family using their story to push for change at the Capitol this session, asking for the footage to be reviewed monthly, kept for longer periods of time and not deleted, and able to be viewed without a complaint being raised. They'd also like for bathrooms, which are unmonitored, to be audio recorded. They fear abuse is happening there without fear of being recorded and caught. These circumstances happened in Kanawha County in this last year. It definitely proves that we need to relook at those provisions, relook re at those uh, those laws. Lawmakers confirmed to Eyewitness News that bills are being drafted. Most of the schools and the teachers and the principals, they, they want to take care of, but every now and then something slips through and we need to have check and balances to make sure these don't go through and, and uh, hold people accountable to their actions. Hoping their story is the beginning of something new. We've got to get these laws changed. West Virginia needs to do better and we can do better. And a reason kids like Trenton are protected in the classroom. Eyewitness News reporter Leslie Rubin first broke this story when the investigation launched last year and she's followed every development since. So Leslie, what did Boggs have to say to the judge today? Dave, they were the words that those families wanted to hear Nancy Boggs say that she was guilty. She said it 10 times for each of the 10 counts of battery that she pleaded guilty to today. With respect to count one, how do you plead guilty? Alarming admissions. How do you plead guilty? From a former teacher entrusted to educate and care for some of the most vulnerable students. We trusted this woman with our child. I had a wonderful opinion of her prior to finding out that she abused my child. Beth Bowden's nine-year-old son Trenton, one of three students with special needs that Nancy Boggs admitted to abusing inside her classroom at Holtz Elementary last September. The abuse caught on camera. Several months later, the 67 year old was indicted on two dozen charges, all misdemeanors. Now she's pleaded guilty to 10 of them. And both A.S.'s head down my right hand. 
and cause his forehead to strike the desk. Reading a prepared statement for each of the 10 counts, she admitted to slapping students in the face, jerking one child back and forth by the hair, pushing a child's face into a filing cabinet, and jerking chairs out from under her students. Hearing her say the words, although they were scripted and they were um, right in line with the indictment, just hearing her say it out loud, the person that was actually responsible for this abuse, um, yeah, it's, um, it was a very weird feeling and it almost made me feel kind of sick to hear her say it. The West Virginia legislature strengthening classroom laws last session. It's now a felony for a person in position of trust, like a teacher, to abuse a child. Camera laws were also changed, making those videos easier to view and mandating they be regularly reviewed without a complaint first having to be raised. These vulnerable students, this population of students that this is happening to, we have to be their voice. A voice for those who sometimes can't speak for themselves, as the one who hurt them physically and emotionally prepares for the possibility of years behind bars. Boggs faces up to 10 years in jail. That's one year for each of those battery charges that she pleaded guilty to. If Judge Mary Claire Akers were to run those sentences consecutively, she would be sentenced to 10 years in jail, but she could get out and have that for good behavior. It really was a stunning and extremely emotional hearing as sobs could be heard from the families as that video was played that showed for the first time exactly what Nancy Boggs did to children with special needs in her classroom. We do want to warn you, some of the video is tough to watch. You turned your, your classroom into a place of what can only be described as torture. Torture at the hands of a teacher trusted with the most vulnerable students. And for the first time, we're seeing a glimpse of the abuse that happened inside Nancy Box's classroom at Holtz Elementary. Chairs pulled out from under students. A child shoved across the classroom, jerked by her hair, while forced to sit for hours in isolation behind a partition. Children, all with special needs between the ages of 8 and 10, verbally and physically abused by the person they were supposed to learn from and trust. It makes me sick. Elizabeth Foley is the mother of Sophia Pressman, who was 8 when she was in Boggs' classroom. She also had her as a teacher the year before, her family moving her to West Virginia for a better education. She was living with me in Texas, and... Um, we thought it was a better opportunity for her because of the small ratio of kids to students because in Texas it's a lot, a lot larger. It was their first time seeing the videos and their first time speaking about what happened to their daughter. She asked me every day over the summer if she was bad, why you would call her trash, why you told her that she needed to go home, that no one loved her, that I didn't love her, her dad didn't love her. That nobody loved her. You made her eat lunch off the bathroom floor. Boggs was initially indicted on two dozen misdemeanor charges, eventually pleading guilty to 10. The classroom abuse case and another at Horace Mann Middle School, prompting the West Virginia legislature to rewrite the law, making it a felony for a person in position of trust, like a teacher, to abuse a child. Craig and Beth Bowden advocating tirelessly since learning their son Trenton was one of the victims. They wanted stronger laws when it came to cameras in special needs classrooms. Now, because of their work, the videos will be routinely reviewed and kept for longer periods of time. We have the fight in us still and we'll continue to fight to make it better and to bring good out of this horrible situation. Boggs turning to the families when it was her turn to talk and offering a quiet apology. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the Children. But it didn't go far with the judge, who made the choice to show the videos, saying they showed the true magnitude of the case that had before only been discussed with what she called sterile descriptions. This court finds that these offenses are brutal and malicious in nature 
against multiple children with exceptional needs who are among the most vulnerable in our society. Immediately taken to jail, the veteran teacher will spend the next 10 years there, the maximum time allowed under the law.